evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Saeed al -Nandi. I am very glad to be with you again for the fourth of fifth season. Fifth season. Uh, actually, I am very grateful for this activity needed by Dr. Abdullah uh, I have prepared for you four topics which topic you want to start, we will start. Hmm? <coughs> now by the way, each is separately different from the other. I can make an introduction at the end, I can make this start, whatever you like. But what I prefer is to keep the sixes at the end. Okay, introduction. Islam and Christianity. 
It's transmitted from generation to generation. And now the people, if you talk with anyone, was in India, last Shawala and Dorkreda. And the famous answer to me is, Inna wajadna abana ala umma, wa inna ala atharihim muqtadu. So this religion is transmitted from generation to generation by the Hindus leaders, by parents to their children in the temples, and in the communities, including the schools. Uh, many faiths under one name. There are a lot of Hinduism faiths. It's not uh, the same. I mean, some people in North India, they consider themselves Hindu. And people in South India consider themselves as Hindu. But they are totally different. They practice totally different. Their faith totally different. But still they consider themselves Hindu. An example. For example, in south of India, they worship certain God. In north of India, they worship another God. And their customs there is different than the customs here. So it, it's totally different. There is no single spiritual authority. It's not like uh, for Christians. Christians, they have the Pope in uh, Italy or in Vatican. He is the authority. But the Hindu, they have thousands of authorities. Thousands. And each authority can do and can change the revelation and the scripture even. There is no unified creed. In Islam the creed, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. In Christianity they have different creeds that they believe that the God sent his only son to be crucified uh, to save us from our sin. But in Hindu, they don't have a particular creed. Uh, numberless schools of independence, different schools, different thoughts, express, expressed in tens of thousands of Koro of all over the India. So each Guru is having his thought, his giving his thought to his followers. So now it became the, the religion of 10,000 of beliefs and faiths. There are a lot of divisions of Hinduism, a lot. I, as I mentioned, up to thousands. But the main four divisions which have the most of the followers belonging to the Vaishnavism, which they worship Vishnu, Krishna, and Rama. As you see here, Vishnu and Krishna and Rama are related to each other. Krishna and Rama are avatars of Vishnu. I will tell you what is avatars later. So, so they are in one group. Shaivas, they worship Shiva. Smartas, they have one deity chosen from a specific pantheon of gods. A lot of gods, they select one. So when the person selects the one god, it doesn't mean that he will worship that god only. Today you will worship God number one. Only one. There is only one God. So, but you worship God number one inside the temple. By the way, this uh, 
Bankian is uh, it's like the temple where uh, or the grave of the of gods and they put idols in that grave. So they one person come and worship one god. Next day he will not worship that. He will worship the other god. That day, the first day, he wants to marry, so he worshiped the god of marriage. Next day, he had problems, so he goes to the god of obstacles and worship that god. Next day, he worship another god. For example, the lady wants to worship separate god because she wants to be beautiful. So, only one god. But each day, they have different god. Huh? One god at a time. Shaktism, they worship deity. So these are the main uh, divisions of Hinduism. The basic principles of Hinduism, karma, dharma, reincarnation, and moksha. Maybe difficult words, but when I explain it, it will be easy. What's karma? Hmm? Karma means deeds or acts. Like uh, charity, like fasting, like pilgrimage. What I'm saying is they have. The Hindu, they have this charity, pilgrimage, fasting. So all of these are called karma. Uh, broadly means for any action, a subsequent reaction. This is a, 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 a man in Lugawi. And this is a man in Stilai. Huh? So broadly means for any action, a subsequent reaction. So karma means if I do something, there will be a reaction for what I do. If I say salam to the Pradala, if he answered me, wa salam, this is a reaction, so it is karma. We call the fact what the fact. For any action, a reaction. So for any deed or any act, there must be a reaction. Okay? So it is a reaction to the act. This verse from the Abhinishad, Abhinishad is one of the holy books. According as one acts, so does he become. One becomes virtuous by virtuous action, bad by bad action. So if you do good thing, you will get good action, a reaction. If you do bad thing, what you get is bad reaction. Logically, it is accepted. Dharma. Dharma is the righteous path. Reached by following God's divine law. So if you follow the divine law, means you are doing the Dharma. So ethical practices, duties, and obligations. Obligations from the their Goro, ethical practices, practices and duties, what they found in Goro or in Goros or in their uh, sacred laws. A Dharma, A Dharma means again is Dharma. It's opposition to divine love. Let us have this verse from their second books. Dharma yields heaven's honor and earth's wealth. So, somebody doing Dharma means they will get something in the heaven and he will be wealthy in the earth. Huh? There is nothing more rewarding than dharma 
nor anything more Reynolds than its negligence. So if you do good, you will get good. If you do bad, you will get bad. Till now it's okay, is it? But the interpretation now, after wars, you'll find that they are way too much of it. Reincarnation, or what they call samsara. It is a continuous cycle. Continuous cycle of birth, life, death, rebirth. Okay? So this cycle is the reincarnation or some sad. So uh, reincarnation means the soul of somebody transmitted to another person. So they consider, let us say, let us take. An example from them, Vishnu. Vishnu, they believe that was born from Brahma. This Vishnu had a life, then died. He had reincarnations. Reincarnations means somebody, hit the soul of Vishnu went to him. So, he had ten reincarnations. Among these reincarnations, Krishna. So the soul of Vishnu transmitted to Vishnu, uh, to Krishna, and Krishna to Rama. So this is the soul is going this way. Then what happened after that? He had vibration of the soul. What they call moksha. I will talk about it. So they believe that they are not the body they are living in, but the soul. Hmm? Is that understood? So they concentrate on the soul. A person, he is not the body, he is the soul. So for example, somebody died and was going back. His soul will go to something bad. So his soul might go to no. dog. Yes. So if it goes to a dog, means he, he must be doing bad things, then his soul went to a dog. Hmm? But if he is doing good, his soul will go to something good. Hmm? That's why they don't kill animals. Because they think the souls of their fathers are in the animals. Even the flies, even the cow, even, even the uh, rat, whatever. They don't kill it because they think that the, the souls of their fathers and grandfathers are there. Uh, this is from Vedas. After death, the soul goes to the next world, bearing in mind the subtle impressions of its deeds. And after reaping their harvest, returns again to this world of action. Thus he, who has desired continuous subject to refer. So they, they believe that when somebody died, his soul will go to heaven. Then the soul will come back from heaven to another person. Hmm? And one way of making the soul uh, to, to be fast, to go up and down to another person, is by the incrimination, by burning, burning the dead body. Hmm? There are short of huh? <laughs> Okay, moksha. What is moksha? Now I explain to you the reincarnation. The birth, life, death, again rebirth, life, death, then rebirth, life. Is it going to be continuous? No. They believe that somebody is doing good deeds and he is doing meditation, and he is good in all of his deeds, 
his soul will be liberated, will be out of this cycle. His soul will go and unite with the God. Hmm? It becomes God. So his soul will go and unite with the God. This is what they believe as uh, emotion. It is a subsequent reaction to the deeds, what he did. So it is it depends on karma. Action, or any action, a reaction. So he used to be doing good, so the reaction is the da, reaction is the liberation. Subsequent reaction of realizing God and becoming righteous. So if somebody reached to the level of the belief that there is a God and doing the right things, he'll be liberated. There are a lot of things to make somebody to be liberated. Doing the good deeds, going to go for uh, meditation, going in the forest and be away from people and just only meditate. So they think these people will be vibrating. Hindu epics and the Borans relate several episodes. You know what's epics? Okay, how 
we can use this to talk with a Hindu person and call him for example. How we can, or ca how can we use these ideas to call Hindu to Islam? Hmm? Ideas of similarity. Yeah. Of acting upon the good deeds as described or as directed. Okay. Okay. In Islam, in no, Islam, is. we have this for any action. A subsequent reaction, if you do good things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. Hmm? If you do bad things, it is punishment for you, if that will. So, you have to follow the teaching of that. Okay? In order to obtain what? Is it to obtain what? Huh? This is uh, the place where do the burning of the body. Hmm? 
they take some food and throw it in the fire. They go to the idol and they give the idol some food. So they do it as things. If any step is lost, their marriage is not fulfilled. And they do it also during the, these rituals. They, they have festivals and they have pilgrimage. And their pilgrimage also in the Ganga River. This is the Ganga River. By the way, you can see the color. It's very dirty. It's dirty. That's the dirt. See, they are washing the, the river, and they consider it as purification from sins. And very dirty river, they throw the dead animals, they throw the ash of the dead persons. Society uh, they have these things, the ashram, the uh, monasticism, varnas, vegetarians, convert the conversion, we take it by one by one. The ashram, they have four ashrams of life. Each is twenty-five years. The first twenty-five years to gain knowledge. They just keep it to, to, to learn. Between 26 to 50, they raise family and work. They consider it part of the religion. From 51 to 71, uh, to 75, to serve society more than his own family. And still, they consider it part of the religion. More than 75 years, leaving the family and society and going for, uh, to the forest for upliftment. He wants to die in the forest, so his soul will get my way. Both, yeah? The Ivanas, which are the groups of society, there are four groups of society. The Brahmins, to work with intellect, because they are from the head of the God. These people are from the head of the God. Uh, by the way, Sister Mona here? Yes, thank you. You are here? Yes. Welcome, Mona. I'm very happy. Uh, you were from this group? I thought it didn't mix me same. Yeah, between two groups, huh? Okay, the shark need to protect society and country, means the soldiers, from this group. Vaishaya, the business activity, and the last group, which are the worst group, are the Shodras, manual worker. What are the difference between these groups? Discrimination. There is a big discrimination between them. 
Brandman the top. Uh, shoulders are the the lowest. Yeah. Uh, and any Brahmins can any shoulders. Nobody can ask why. Huh? Nobody. At least uh, 10, 25 years ago. But now with the uh, Prophet and the human, the human rights, it's difficult to, to do it. Uh, Brahman, he eat in his dish. If this dish had been touched by any of the other groups, he would throw the dish. Hmm? It became uh, dirty. Uh, nobody of these groups can marry from other groups. Nobody. Hmm? It is uh, inherited by birth. Yeah, a lady, lady can marry uh, if, she, if the lady is from this group. She can marry this group from this group, but she paid too much money, too much money in order to reach to this marriage. Taxi less improvement of the lineage. This way may be this type or this group to escape away from the religion. Because they found that Islam is giving them the rights, Islam giving them the equality, so if they want to escape from the religion and go to Islam. But they are under strong attach of the other group. Uh, these things, the monasticism, uh, this is uh, somebody going away from his family to meditate and stay in the forest and just there till he died, believing that his soul will be vibrated. Uh, vegetarians, they eat vegetable because it's part of their religion that they don't want to eat the souls or kill the souls of their fathers or grandfathers or ancestors. Converting uh, from Hindu to Islam or to Christianity is a lot, a lot, because of the poverty, because they found that the other religion is much than their lifestyle, so they converted. But conversion from Islam to Hindu, or from Christianity to Hindu, uh, it's rarely, rarely happening. Rarely. It's only among those ignorant people. Uh, they don't call people to their religion. They don't call. Okay, how beautiful is this place? It's in India. And by the way, if you are in the airplane, yeah. There is a reason why they are not finding people to deal with. Why? Huh? Because there are so many sects. It's not like Islam, one only. There are so many factors. So they, they will get they will, uh, they will not disappointed to, to which sect he will go. Yes. Yes, you are right. By the way, if you are in the airplane over India, you can see the images like this. You can see everything very clear. We don't have dust like this. In summary, Hinduism is one of the oldest uh, religious, spiritual, and philosophical traditions. The purpose of human life in Hinduism is to avoid rebirth again. Any question? Yes. It's okay. Uh, thank you for your uh, Is it possible to make communication uh, with the leader of this plan to the, the leader vessel for, for this? To, to speak with him 
But later on, in the time of Upanishad, it comes to practice, the people started changing, and also the Manu Smriti. Maybe you would not have been going to that book. Manu is the one man. The Hindus believe that Manu is the first man. Like we believe Adam is the first man. So Manu is the first creation of Brahma, and Manu is the son of Brahma. Brahma is the, the Lord of creation. So he is the so Allah created the Brahmins for the what is so called it as the head of the uh, Brahma the meaning that. But I mean to say that the, when the, in the time of Upanishad, they started changing everything. That means Allah descended, they made it as Avadar. Avadar means incarnation that from the God. You know, this is all they change it. They themselves knowingly change it. Even my coming to, my reversion to Islam, it is through the Bhagavad Gita because there is a beautiful ayah is saying that the one who pray to me, I will they will reach to me. The one who pray to the other than me, they will go to that God. So there are so many verses it is supporting the Quran. So the means uh, the fragments of the truth is still lying in the books of the Hindus like the Veda, Sikh Veda, especially Athrava Veda. There it is mentioned about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and where he was born and what is his father, what is his mother and what he will do and he will have a lot of uh, Sahabis and so on and so That means uh, I want you to highlight more on the what is his called. You suffered a lot to learn because even the word that is uh, Sanskrit word it is not so easy to learn. And uh, also the river that is saying Asthathana Murisha Dharma Asya Asya Bharatava Aprabhya Maam That means those who are not, uh, those who are weak in their karma or their action, they will have the river. They are, they are the people changing this way, all I is not a river, so that means they are suffering in the hellfire. And this is so equal to the Aya uh, in the, what is this called, Surah Tadisa 56. That means they will suffer in the hellfire, not in the river, in the samsar. Samsar means it is weird. It is not the samsar means, you know. Also the moksha, you said that not all the soul will not be liberated. The best soul and they will have the nirvana or they will just, and also the Bhagavad Gita, the existing Bhagavad Gita, still it is saying so, but it is called it. The one who recognizes me that I am birthless and origin, and that means there is no origin for me, I am the first and last, that they will attain the salvation. The fragments of the truth they lie in the different books of the Hindus, but the Hindus, they deviated everything from the truth, you know. The Vedic time, it about more than 3,000 years, and it was going the proper way. Then they started keeping these books. They started guiding the people to the, uh, what is this called, the politism, to keep the people in law to suffer in the hellfire. That is their bad intention that they did. That is why they maybe if you go through the articles, um, I really brought a little more part for you. It is here. So that you can take it and all the religion in the hospital And the sick is of the for me or for, uh, for you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, actually, the one who talk, the one who talk from inside the thing, is not like the one who talk from outside. Yeah. And Mona uh, is uh, one of the persons who, uh, with compared to, to Islam. A long time ago, 20 years, and uh, more than 20 years, yeah. And she is uh, since then reading too much about Islam, and she knows a lot about Hinduism. So he, she is much, much, much better than me in delivering these things. Uh, but what I uh, am doing is my readings. <coughs> And from my travels to India, I traveled to India almost uh, around 20 times till now. And uh, I try to read in their sacred books, but it's changing from time to time, unfortunately. This is the Vida, or part of Vida, and this is the Bhagavad Gita. I'll talk about it in the uh, sacred books. Further. Okay. <coughs> uh, nice and interesting uh, 
complete uh, an explanation. But I have some questions. What are the benefits to be moksha? Level of moksha. The benefit of reaching to moksha? Yes. Yes. The last answer is. Okay, I have another one. Okay. The second question, uh, where did they bring uh, the, whole, uh, the idea of holy Ganga, Ganga River? And the third, there is a Christian and... Well, wait, uh, I need the third, uh, give me the name. Our, uh, your, uh, Ban Banu, <coughs> Dr. Babo, uh, he is a Hindu, a professor in Obi Jaini. He will answer you from his aspect. His question is, uh, what is moksha? And, and how, uh, what is moksha? What is the ultimate of moksha? Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll go ahead. And what is the story of Ganga River? Okay, so first of all, uh, a very good evening to all of you, brothers and sisters. And uh, I'm very much delighted to be with you. It's a great honor and it's a great privilege to me amongst you. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, basically, I was born as a Hindu and uh, brought up in uh, Christianity because we were put in the schooling of uh, Christian schools. So the simultaneously, the, my life you know, has taken a journey in both Hinduism as well as in Christianity. And uh, in fact, honestly speaking, no one has encouraged me uh, to go ahead and know about Islam back home in India. I am very fortunate and I am very grateful to my colleagues who are here in Saudi Arabia. So they encouraged me, they gave me a lot of books. I have been going through uh, the Holy Quran. And uh, so regarding the question, I am not a very good expert being I am a, I am a uh, doctor by That's profession. That's why we want the knowledge of medium. Uh, religious church. Yeah, so yeah. I've been uh, going through the spiritual life. So the question of moksha. Moksha said, for in Hinduism, ultimately you have to achieve your goal. What is your goal? If you are taking a journey as a student, as a small pupil, to be a student, to be a mature person, a hyper mature person, the ultimate goal of reaching your spiritual life is to attain moksha. The word moksha means you are going to merge, we, we believe in soul, we believe in soul, the human soul. So the soul has to merge with the Almighty, that is the God, the Brahma. Or we have the Trimurti, the three gods like Vishnu, Brahma and Parameshwara. So Brahma is the ultimate where your soul has to merge with the God without any further rebirths or usually in Hinduism, we have a strong belief that once you die, so depending on your sins or your good works, so you will have a rebirth. The rebirth is the must in Hinduism. Suppose if you do good job, good works, doing, doing good service to the humanity, so your birth will be maybe in the human form. Again, in different sort of Brahmin, you may be a Brahmin depending on your, uh, you know, the deeds, or maybe a Shudra. Depending on your is again the same thing. But apart from that, if you have done beyond the limits of rebirths, there won't be any rebirth again. Your soul will be merged with the Brahma ultimately. That is the moksha, that is the ultimate target and goal and objective of any person who is going through a spiritual journey. That is the moksha. So that's one. And regarding, regarding the Ganga, Ganga river, we feel the Hindus we feel that it is a sacred river, sacred river. So you go there, whatever sins you have done, whatever mischievous works you have done, whatever wrongdoings you have done without your knowledge or with your knowledge, suppose if you want to get rid of those, uh, you know, the bad deeds, so if you want to get rid of that, the Ganga river is the sacred river situated in the northern part of India. We people, we go there, we merge, we, you know, into the river. So once we merge into the river, we feel that our sins have already, you know, gone out of it, erased, erased beams. So that is the idea of the people going to Ganga and merging with the river for some time and they come out of that. Yes? 
Yes, we, we call it as a holy water, sacred river, holy water. So, so as Sassar said, there will be a lot of contamination in the Ganga River. Though it is said to be a sacred water, holy water, but you can see a lot of contamination like dead bodies, ash. Yes, this is the Ganga River. This is what we believe in. Thank you very much. Thank you.
how they made the hybrids. How they say that this God is the, that I know is black, and that is that. So no one is saying, no one is saying the God. <laughs> Vida. Vida to the 
good fat, عندنا الصراط المستقيم and remove the sin that makes us astray and wander. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم وعيد النظر الجميل. Muhammad in Hindu scripture. In Burana, Antima Avatara, that means last messenger. Uh, Jagabati, Lord of the World, that is in Burana. Uh, Samudra, Lord Araban, means last messenger from Arabia. He will write Kalam. This is in Vida. And uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wrote Kamu, is it? He will have 12 wives. This is in Vida. Who is the Prophet have 12 wives? Huh? Muhammad. He will be circumcised and bearded. He will not consume pork. This is in Quran. He will travel to the heaven with an unimaginable speed and return to the earth. I think this is This is where? Same in Quran. Is it still uh, in this book? Oh, do they? Still, no? Still. Uh, this is Muhammad. His name will be Muhammad. Can you read this scripture? Or not your language? Yes? Okay, and then one, one member of the family became Muslim, and the rest 
stuff. Uh, then uh, what will be punished? And if one of the family so say, the converted, repeat the question. And if one of the family converts to Islam, is the family going to do anything for him? Individual. Mona. Huh? I mean, you mean to say the Hindu family yes. is getting converted into Islam? No, one of the Hindu family converted to Islam. Uh, Any are they going to be punished means, by his family? No, nothing. It is all purely individual basis. Mana, can you can you give us your uh, experience? Talk to me. Now Hindu citizen acts a terrible version. They uh, as if my family consider that I am not alive. But uh, recently, I mean, because of my patience and my sufferings. Gradually I could able to win that I try to contact with my daughter now and some of my sisters also. But uh, they gave the warning to me that you can speak anything but I accept Islam. They are putting even my daughter under vigilance that I am giving, passing the Islamic knowledge to her or not. So lastly, lastly accept. Yeah, so that means so they consider that I have been <laughs> cremated, that I am not alive because I'm, I love it with the risk. Can I give an idea? It's, uh, I think it may be an individual uh, scenario. So if you consider whole across India, if you take 100% of the uh, Hindus being converted into Islam, it's actually they, they encourage, the families they encourage because it will come with a lot of uh, introspection. They always introspect themselves, what is good, what is bad. They read, they go into the depths, then only they will go into Islam. It's not that one has been converted into that and they will catch and they will uh, throw them out of uh, their family members. I think it is only in certain parts, certain parts. Maybe I would say one to three percent. But it's a rare instance, yes. Yes, they are behind you. Yeah. What I wanted to say is an, an idea of Thank experience. You. An idea of experience from a very well known, renowned in India. He died in 1943. His name was Mama Khan, Nawab Bahadur Yajan. It's famous that about 100,000 Hindus were converted in the areas of Dakkan and south of India. It was his advice because of the very intricately formulated society of Hindus. They are very strong family and very strong reactions are to be expected. So whenever you try to convert any Hindu person towards Islam, Try not to convert a single person always. Try to convert the whole family or the whole village. This will save him in the sense of society to pass his life. Otherwise, even he has to leave his wife if she is a Muslim, non-Muslim or other so. The strong reaction of the village and the society will be saved like this. So always try to address the whole family, not the individuals. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we can discuss there at the yes. uh, this area. Uh, I'm sorry, brother, but we have a break and to be ready for more repair. But you still have from all after bar, after the mud and the nation break. We have another session to do to sign. I think you are pleased. Our sister, please, uh, they, they leave uh, the whole first. They will follow. So please give the chance for our sister. Well, in this case, we will detail your question, brother. Okay, no problem. So, after my father. While our sister, yes. Go ahead. Why uh, all this difficult? Why I should put uh, myself in a uh, repartment to be uh, myself, to myself be removed? Why all this difficult? I want to, uh, to uh, someone to make me trust this way to my self be removed. You mean in uh, Islam? In Islam, in order to get rid of your sin, you just pray to God directly from anywhere. At any time. And why would I buy myself a river and, uh, and uh, get, uh, cut my clothes and uh, old TV and uh, why? 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 Why?
my dress, go in front of people, go the wash up, show them that I am sinful. I think there are the traditions, the customs, the taboos of Hindu culture. So we are brought from our childhood to the death of our lives. The tradition will go just like that. We will not deviate from the track what has been taught from our birth, from our ancestors, from the Vedas. Highly authenticated scriptures, highly authenticated sacred books like Upanishads, Vedas, everything. What has been taught to us, we are following. So we don't want to, people, they don't want to deviate from the right, they feel that that is the right path. If they say, you don't go to the Ganga River, it may not be sacred, they may not believe you. All my respect, all my respect. Yes. There is obviously better than this in our religion. Yes. Yeah. So if you raise your hand and ask Allah to give my sins, and my sin will be removed. And with this we conclude, brothers, and now we proceed to the coffee break. And to be ready for the Maharaj, inshallah. I will go through the concept of God very quickly. Okay?
But Christianity took it from European because they used to be Trinitarian. So let us just concentrate on this. The Supreme Triad is represented by Vishnu, Vishnu, uh, Brahma, and Shiva. No man. So the, the creator, they believe that this is the creator. Right. So the creator must be in the middle, right? Yes. And this is the preserver, and this is the destroyer. So the universe is done by these three. One of them created, one preserving, one destroying. I just discussed with the doctor just before, uh, during the coffee break, and they told them if Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva wants to use a car, that car is having three driving wheels. And uh, Brahma is holding one of the wheels, uh, Vishnu the other, and Shiva the third. And that car, containing this stream. And one of them want to go to Hyderabad. The other want to go to Bombay. The third want to go to Calcutta. What will happen to the car? It will get destroyed. So it is the same. If these three are those who are dealing with the universe, one of them created, one preserver, one destroyer, what will happen if they got angry with each other? Everything in the universe will get corrupted. So these, the most of Hindu, they are believing on this three, uh, serve as a link between worshiper and God. So they the man illa. Considered as manifestation of God. The Brahma. Brahma is having how many heads? One, two, three, four. How how many good four heads? He loves his wife. Sarasabai. And he don't want to, to turn his head. She was in front of him. She went to the side, right side. So instead of moving his head, the face created it, head created it. Then she went to the back, another one at the back. She went to the left, another one to the left. Yeah? So because he don't want to move. So these three heads, heads created. Uh, this is the main God worshipped by Hindu. All Hindus, they agreed on this. They consider him as the son of the Supreme Being. Now we just mentioned the Paramatma. So this is the son of the Paramatma. But you remember in the, in the scripture, we said the God never born, and the God is not having a father. So we can't accept this. Huh? We can't accept that he is the son of the Supreme Being. He created the universe. Who created the universe? The Paramatma, Supreme God, or Brahma? Brahma. Brahma, they believe Brahma. He, is, uh, he, he had a wife. And four heads. Uh, he is the one who created the human race. He and his wife, they <coughs> gathered and they got, they, they created the human race. Let us read this sentence regarding the creation of the universe. Brahma imbued it or imbued with energy in his nature. So there's energy in the, in the nature of Brahma. Who is 
there and nothing else existed. Nothing existed. With the exertion of its own tapas. You know what is tapas? Tapas? Hmm? What's tapas? Concentrating means How he is the beginning? And the beginning we 
agree that gender agrees that it is wrong? How he is the end of all being and he was killed. He was wounded. He was killed. And how come that the God get killed? Rama. He's an incarnation of Krishna. Uh, he is a tribal hero of ancient India. Uh, he is related to morality, ideal son, ideal husband, ideal king. By the way, if we think about uh, Jews and Christianity, this is related to Christ. Christ and Krishna. Christ, Krishna. Uh, he was born with a mother, from a mother, unknown father. He, after getting born, they escaped. Was born in a prison and they escaped. Jesus with his mother, the Christ with his mother, after a good birth, they escaped. The end of life, Jesus was, as they believe, crucified, and Krishna, they believe that he was wounded at that time. Rama, something if you relate it, it might be related to Solomon. He was ideal son to his father. His ideal husband, he had 1,000 wives and managed all the same. And ideal king, he was the most famous king of all the history. Uh, next one is Anuman. See the, the face is like like monkey. This is one of the popular idols. He's an avatar of Shiva. Uh, worship as a symbol of physical strength, preservance, and devotion. Six is Vishnu. And Vishnu is the preserver of the universe. Lakashmi, uh, derived from uh, a Sanskrit word which means the god or ape. She, was, uh, she is the consort of Vishnu, wife of Vishnu. She is goddess of good, good, uh, good luck, wealthy, beauty. For women, they, they worship her because of beauty, purity, and fertility. And this is represented by the daughters and is the part of the office. Dukra means inaccessible. Not that she's riding a lion and carrying weapons. She represents the power uh, of God, a protector of righteousness and destroyer of evil. Uh, Kali, black, or dark. She is the most fearful uh, among all gods. <coughs> she is the redeemer of the universe. See, uh, this is her huh? husband. Yes. Her husband, she is stepping with one foot over his thigh and the other over his chest. Who is his, her husband? Shiva. Sarasavati. This is the consort of the wife of Brahma. Just mix Brahma and Sarasavati. You think about Ibrahim, Sarah. Huh? Uh, she well, it was believed that she is the mother of Venus, the book. Uh, she is the mother of the human race. And this is the female triad. You remember the male triad, what was it? Vishnu, Brahma, Shiva. 
Who is the creator among these? Brahma. Brahma. Is he here? No. no. He is here. <laughs> See, the Vishnu took the power. Huh? Vishnu took the power. Shiva might take the power. What will happen if Shiva took the power? Or take the power? Everything will get destroyed. The female triad are the wives of the three, the Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Uh, some verses from Veda, the gods have originated after the creation. How it come? God originated after the creation. So who created? They need the, the, the gods, the divas. The divas or the avatars. Divas are heavenly things, means the angels. And the avatars are the incarnation of the avatars, of the, of the divas. Or they call the divas gods, and the avatar they call them gods. So it means divas and avatars originated after the creation. How many gods? Uh, excuse me. Oh, which god did you talk about? Oh, okay. Is it that god came after the creation? They mean Krishna, Rama, Vishnu, like this, Dogra, Kali, this. Uh, how many gods here? See here, this is Arjuna. This is Krishna. Okay? Uh, this is Krishna, his incarnation of Vishnu. Three hundred? No? Three? Three thousand? Three? This is verse from. Abhishek, 33, 6, 2, 1, and a half. Hmm? This is simply, this is verse from the book. One and a half of God? No, this is in the Abhishek. I did not bring it from me. This is the second card. This is uh, very, very important for Hindu. They call it the, uh, the mother. And uh, they have a lot of beliefs about it. Uh, one of the beliefs that they respected because of the belly. Some are saying they respected because Krishna, when he escaped with his mother of a cow, other believe Vishnu was using the cow in his struggles. Uh, Shiva was using the cow in his struggles. So it became respected for this purpose. The, the gods, it's not only these idols. Anything that it is uh, helpful or beneficial, they consider it God. But I don't know in this one, what, is that beneficial or not? I don't know why you consider it as God. Park. You 
get the bullet karate to drink uh, offers, try this food. See, he's eating the rice after Summary in Android, there are multiple cuts. One or more are worship. Some of them just thinking to link to the Paramatma. Do you want to have a little bit Okay, I'll talk about seconds and then discussion. Never die. 
They believe on ten gods from Goro Nanak to Goro Gopin. Okay? Ten gods. Goro Grand Sahib. This is a book. You have to believe on this book. This book was written by Gobind Singh. Teaching of the Ten Gorus, baptism between by the Tenth Goro means like uh, a directive, advanced directive of the Tenth Goro that this person is the one who will be the baptizer. <laughs> the baptizer will give advanced directive for another person that he will be the baptizer. So it is advanced directives from one girl uh, to his generation. I come. Not belonging to any other religion. So it must be not belonging to Islam or Hindu or to any religion. Is it not clear? Let us read this sentence from their book, from Grand Sah. I observe neither Hindu fasting nor the ritual of the Muslim Ramadan month. So he's not doing the fasting of the Hindu and he is not doing Ramadan fasting. So he is not Hindu, he is not Muslim. Can I say from Hindus and Muslims have a broken free? Means I worship the God and I am free from Islam, free from Hindu. I perform neither Kaaba pilgrimage nor at batting spot worship. Means he's not doing pilgrimage to Makkah, he's not doing pilgrimage to Ghana. One song Lord I said, and no other, means he had no other gods. I perform neither the Hindu worship nor the Muslim prayer. Means they don't do prayer, they don't do the Hindu worship. We neither are Hindus nor Muslims. Our body and life belong to the one supreme being, who alone is more Rama and Abna for us. He means that they worship the God. <coughs> Whether called Allah or Rama or Krishna or whatever, it is a God. History of this religion. Uh, the founder, Guru Nana, he was born in 1469. So the religion is not more than 500 years. Uh, Criticized the ritual of Hindus and Muslims. This Goro is the leadership passed to nine successive Goro. Means he had successive Goros next to him. Uh, nine, so one and nine, ten Goros. The final Goro. Gobind Singh died in 1708. Okay, means Goros finished that time, which is around 300 years back. Goro Gobind Singh declared, means the 10th Goro, Goro, he declared that Sikhs no longer needed the living Goros. The 10th one, he declared that we don't need any more Goros. So he established Khalsa, Khalsa means pure, and appointed the book which is called Siri Goro Grand Sai, which is the eternal Goro for Sir. The eternal Goro for Sir is that book. So that book they consider is the Goro from 300 years till now. These are the Sikh Gurus. The meaning of Goro is teacher 
or religious person or saint of Sikhism. The Guru in Sikhism means the ten person who established the religion. But they use it as a teacher, they use it as a religious person, they use it as a saint of Sikhism. Sometimes you'll find Goro now, or any Sikhism now called Goro, but they don't mean the Goro, the real Goro. These are the ten Goros. The first of them born on 1469, and the last of them died on 1701. <coughs> or the view to be committed to sikhism you have to do this thing and if you do it means you are khasa, you are pure the high sikh purpose of, of commitment if you reach to khasa or pure means you are most committed the animal person. Men and women who have undergone the Sikh Babitism ceremony, the Babitism ceremony, and who strictly follow the Sikh code of conduct and custom. So, men and women who have Babitism and follow the customs, they are in Khaz, they are pure. What is their characteristic? They wear turban. This is the turban, which is covered in uncut head, a hair. <laughs> so they are covered in their hair, which they never cut. Yes. See, the, even the beard, they take it out, and they take it with the hair. And they wear kirpa, which is the swap. And they put it inside, touching the skin. And most of them uh, face a lot of problems when they are at the airport. They go to the airport, want to travel. If the one in the uh, uh, who is uh, the security, if he is not serious or seeking, otherwise he will send somebody. So they travel usually by car or by train. Those who travel in the airplane, they buy bus to security. Because of this, Even they don't have pilgrimage, 
but they used to go and do pilgrimage in this uh, temple. But the, their book mentioned that all the temples are considered the same. <coughs> all temples which have been mentioned in the book are all considered the same. But still they are going and doing pilgrimage in this uh, golden temple. What's the concept of God in Sikhism? They believe that there is only one formless God. He is the creator, he is the preserver, he is the destroyer. They don't have idols, they don't worship idols. Uh, they reach only through the God. Means they cannot worship the God without going through the God. What's the goal of human life in uh, Sikhism? <coughs> to break the cycle of birth and death and birth with God. This is exactly like, <coughs> like in Hindu. To break the reincarnation, to go to Moksha. Uh, accomplished by following Goro, meditation and good deeds. If you are following the Goro, uh, the Goro in meditation, it's exactly like in Hindu, and uh, doing good deeds like uh, Hindu, then you will be released from this cycle. So the goal of human life is to get released to reach to Moksha. This is their sacred book, it's called Siri Goro Granith. Uh, Sahib, the only scripture they have, and they call it the living Guru of Sikh. Uh, they respect it too much, this book, and they put it in high places. They bow to it. Uh, it had collection of devotional hymens, stress on meditation, containing moral, ethical rules, for the development of soul, spiritual salvation, and unity with God. In conclusion, Sikhism is the following or following their gurus. They have ten gurus. They have one sacred book. They have to follow it. They believe on them and they follow their teaching and follow the teaching of the book. They believe on one immortal God and they are uh, free from other religions. Their uh, goal of life is to have the moksha, exactly like the Hindu, and uh, uh, they worship the God through the Gauras. Uh, they, they are uh, actually away from Muslims, away from <coughs> Hindu. So it's like the Protestant. They get some of Islamic teaching and some of Christian teaching. They make the Protestant sect of Christianity. Then later with time, then later with time, this sect, the Protestant, uh, deviated and became like the other sects in Christian. Here, Goro, the uh, Sikh. They are opposing Hindu, they are opposing Muslims. Their number is around 20 million worldwide, many in India. Thanks a lot. Zakhlafia, Dr. Said, we have 10 minutes for question and answer. So the floor is open now for any comments, any questions. Okay, I have a question. Salam alaikum. And uh, regarding this uh, Sikhism or Sikh religion, I have put it up my comments as well as the real who is Guru Nanak. In fact, Guru Nanak was so close to the Muslims. Maybe the present book, they got deviated. That's what I want you to review my, my flash. And he was even praying in the masjid. And he was uh, receiving the uh, Islamic scholars. Even one of the Sheikh Islam is called Ibrahim Sahib. And he met him and then yeah, he, he asked him, who is your Lord? Then he started uh, reciting about who is the concept about God. So this uh, 
Muslims scholar, he has got nothing to do with it because he believes in the true God, true the eternal God. So that he encouraged, but he never uh, what is called bowed down and in front of any deities of Hindus. And he was a complete. He is from a Brahmin family, but he was very opposite to the practice of Brahmins, and he even refused to put that thread. Brahmins used to wear. And he said that this thread is going to make you purify and as you are doing all the crimes and sin and mutilating the people, he also defending. Then in the later on, maybe they don't want to show this, his affinity towards Muslims, maybe they change the scripture. But when you highlight to my flash, you will understand the another version. Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's, it's uh, excellent addition. Uh, Actually, uh, the first guru of them, initially he was a Muslim. Yes. And he took from Islam after. He don't want to pray. He don't want to do fasting. He don't want to go to Hajj. He don't want to do anything. So what he took from Islam, he took from Islam that there is only one God. And he took from Islam is to stress on charity in doing the good deeds. Uh, he took from Hindu the meditation, and he took from Hindu the, uh, uh, from Hindu the, the moksha and, the, and this reincarnation. So he, he mixed the faith, and he get rid of some of the deeds. So this way, he want to make those who are uh, not strong in their religion to follow him. If you find, or if you tell people that the religion is this and this, very simple, they will follow you. So he made it very simple to make people to follow him. Uh, this person, the followers after that were the Hindu who followed him. And those who followed him, none of Muslims followed him. All Hindus followed him. The next guru was Hindu. The, after that, Hindu, all of them uh, Sikh. But the first one were Muslim, the second one Hindu, then all remaining are Sikh. Uh, they have a belief regarding this hair. The belief is that they don't want to cut it at all till they uh, kill Muslims and Hindu and talk to the power. When they take the power from Hindu and from Hindu and Muslims, they will cut it. Why? Why? Hmm? Why? Why do you believe in this? Why? <coughs> if, uh, and in this way is to make them to suffer in order to stress on themselves to do what they want. Do you focus to suffer only? Yes. I understand this. Yes. They, they have uh, the intention to kill, they have the intention to, to get things from the others. But even what they teach, don't do that, but they do it. I mean, they teach the children something. When they reach to a certain age, they teach them different things. And, uh, just one more question. What is the relationship between rabbits, rabbits and birds? Rats. 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 I want to do someone uh, May, uh, th Those people who are going to that rat temple, they have the belief that the Paramatma resides in the rat. They believe that the God is in the rat. It's exactly like what? It's exactly like the rat is something moving alive. But what about an idol, which is not alive? The uh, carpenter uh, made one and from wood, or the marble maker made one from marble. He is the one who made it. And he take it to the temple, then started to bow in front of it. He believed that the God resides in that. But the God resides in the rat, they believe. Oh, but this is any doctor said Jesus. 
خوست دبي فتك ما في دكتور هناك يقول لهم ان في افراد You mean this is like play, like? Yes. Why? Can he use his mind one minute? You know the last last hour to play for play. Where was it? It was in India, in Kerala. Yes. Hi. First of all, I'd like to ask you for this insightful information relating to Hinduism and Sikhism. When you talk about Sikh people, uh, they have sword and they don't cut their hair. They have also bangles. Yes. Uh, and maybe other features. Uh, what, what what is behind wearing these things? Uh, the Russian behind it, these things. Yeah, the head cover is to cover the hair. And as I mentioned, they don't want to cut the hair till they on the butt. Till they get uh, the power. The sword is a mark of uh, coming or conducting the commandment being committed to the God and this is a feature that we will use this sword to kill our enemies. So they keep it hidden. They don't keep it in front. It's hidden. It's touching their skin. <coughs> I don't have explanation for the band. What is it, Yaman? Huh? He's showing the uh, sovereignty of uh, brotherhood. Suppose the girl chooses to give this bangle to a man, he will be more than dear to her, more than her own maternal brother. And therefore, he will be a brother to her. That's all. Yeah. Showing brotherhood. Yes. Uh, this is my first time uh, attending this uh, session. This is my first time attending this session. My question is, uh, how is knowing the beliefs of Hindus and Sikhs um, uh, relevant to calling people to Islam? How is? How is knowing the beliefs of Sikhs and Hindus? Relevant to calling people to Islam. You mean how, what's, what's the benefit of knowing their belief? How necessary or vital is that? How necessary is this? See, if you know the belief of the others, you can approach them better than if you don't know. For example, let me tell you something. Uh, from what we see, see, we have one Chinese here, Ibrahim. He knows. To speak Chinese, he knows the beliefs of Chinese. Uh, he knows what are their religions, so they, he can approach them, and he is the only one who can attract them uh, in a better way. If I go to them, no one will accept from me. Like uh, Filipino, uh, I used to bring Filipino to our region and invite people to Islam. I stay to, to get a Muslim from Filipino one per 10 days. But when I bring this Filipino who knows the Christianity inside their country in the Philippines, he used to bring in one day around 50 persons. See the difference? So if you know the religion of the people, you can approach them. You know how to approach them. Yeah. What is the other thing? Yeah. We have ordered several verses from Muslim to Republican Many verses, they are good and similar to the Quran also. Was that book ancient, uh, revealed from the God, and changed like Bible later on? Actually, I have discussion about this with uh, with uh, Hindu scholars, but, uh, not Hindu, Muslim scholars in India, about this matter. And uh, I was insisting on something that they don't believe and they were against me. I have to believe that the uh, religion of Hindu started more than 3,000 
500 years back, maybe more. That era was the era at start of Moses. But Moses did not go to India. And Moses' uh, followers, in that time, they did not go to India. All of them were restricted to uh, Egypt and Palestine. Before that era, Abraham was And Abraham known to have got Sohab Ibrahim. Most of this region of Abraham uh, book went to India. And the, one of the evidence is that the first name in Hindu, the first name that they consider God in Hindu is Brahma. And Brahma is like Ibrahim. Sarah Sabati is like Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim. It's related. So these verses went there, and uh, the Sahih of Ibrahim is exactly like Quran, almost like Quran. That's why most of the verses resemble Quranic verses. What is the uh, undefeated uh, will? What? What is the uh, undefeated, undefeated point in one sentence? If I talk to uh, him, what is an undefeated point? When he listened to it, he said, I shall not lie on Allah, I shall not know Muhammad Rasulullah. Well, I, I know it. I will not suffer too much to bring it in and discuss it. Yes. What is the different of Lord God and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala? Lord, they call Lord Krishna, Lord Rama, Lord Vishnu. So the Lord, they, what they call, uh, they are the avatar, they are the angels. And they put the angels as gods. Uh, it's mentioned in the Quran, Ya'budun al malaika So they worship the angels. They are not worshiping the real God. Or they might be worshiping the real God through the angels. Here? Dawood? Yeah, here. Uh, uh, adding to the similarities between uh, the, what has come in uh, Vedas and uh, some verses of Quran. Once I heard uh, Dr. Zakir Naik telling that uh, those also might be uh, sacred books. And uh, I mean, the Vedas. Apart, uh, regardless of whether they have been changed or not. And also maybe they were having also some uh, prophets because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Muslims are increasing. 
No, uh, the percentage. You ask about. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Mona, can you answer that? Use a microphone. Out of total population, but Indian government is trying to cover the real picture of the, the Hindus are declining now. They don't want to really bring it up. So that in the media we are getting the wrong record. In fact, the Indian population, the Muslim population is 100, uh, 166 million now. And, and all that to keep them as minority. With this we conclude, we thank Dr. Saeed al Hamdi very much. He came all the way from Bisha to enlighten us, so we pray to Allah to reward him for every single minute that he spent. And next Friday, inshallah, will be the last conclusion. You will be meeting uh, Brother Hudayfa, the American brother, coming all the way from Riyadh. And then after Maghrib will be the graduation ceremony. As usual, we will allow our sisters now to proceed to leave the hall. And what if we entertain one question while you are waiting here? We'll allow one question from the brothers while you are waiting for our sisters to leave the place. Any comments? Yes, Father. for the God and many idols and also the, there, are, I mean, there are many verses says or mentions the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him and uh, how can you explain and comment on their rejection of uh, the Prophet Muhammad and uh, the, I mean the oneness of the God? Yeah, simply the answer is uh, what is mentioned in the Quran in our Jannah and our Ummah? This is one point. The second point is the, the Hindu, uh, they don't read their books, they follow their uh, priest. So the priest is the one who is telling them what to do, what not to do. And the priest is getting money. If Hindu uh, read in their book and discover, what is in the book, they will not follow the priest. And whatever they get offering in the temple, uh, who will take it? The idol or the priest? The one who will take it is the priest. If people becoming nuts, uh, they convert away from Hindu, means he will be less rich. He will not get enough money. Uh, that's why he is Listen to people, don't read. Come to me. I'll tell you. Also, on your behalf, we thank Professor Babu very, very much. His presence with us really enriched our, uh, our lecture, really. He enriched because he's talking out of experience, and also I respect his really morality. Uh, really, I didn't him the first time, but he left an impression upon my uh, self and my life. So, uh, Professor, we thank you very much for participating this very nice, you know, uh, moral and way. Yeah,